I, I, first of all, I'd just like to thank you folks for coming here today and thank you for visiting the Forest Service and the Forest Products Lab. I hope this tour and this uh, video really gives you an enlightenment as to what we do as an agency and what the Forest Products Lab is all about. Forest Service is a government agency and we are responsible for the active management of all our nations for us, be they urban or be they out in the countryside. We have the largest natural resource-based uh, research organization in the world. It's actually housed within the Forest Service to provide the science and technology so that we can actively manage those forests in an appropriate manner. And the Forest Products Laboratory is at the center of that wood utilization program. And that's where we are today. At the Forest Products Laboratory, our research program focuses on several broad areas. We have a program in nanoscience and technology, we have a program in advanced composite materials, and we have programs in biomass utilization and advanced structures. The Forest Products Laboratory has been in existence since 1910, and we look at uh, better ways to use wood in engineered structures and engineered materials. Our advanced structures area focuses on what we can do to build the next generation of wood structural systems. Uh, for example, we're doing a lot of work on using wood composite materials and combinations of wood and non-wood materials to build high-rise buildings, maybe three, four, or five-story high buildings. And we're looking at addressing some of the technical problems that have to be overcome in order to do that. For example, in some areas in the world, seismic or response to earthquakes is a very important thing. We have to provide the technical basis so that we can design safely with wood products in those areas. So our advanced structures area focuses on that and focuses on ways we can get these materials in concert with other materials into a new generation of structural systems. Behind us we have a large uh, archway that's being tested. Uh, it's going to be tested in two different ways. We're going to test it on side loading in one direction. We also plan to test it in a cyclic manner in order to see how it performs potentially in a seismic situation. In order to test it, however, you have to comport with all of these uh, test parameters. And everything we see here is completely configurable. Uh, this gives us a remarkable capabilities to do uh, whatever we want. A lot of versatility that's just not available at many other labs. In a lot of ways, you can think of this test floor as just a large version of a lot of the smaller tests that go on there. Sometimes we're testing individual pieces of wood, small, uh, clear specimens. Sometimes we have to test something that may be 80 foot long, but essentially many of the tests that do go on in there are performed here just on a much larger scale. Our nanoscience and technology program looks at how we can break down wood into its fundamental constituents in nanocrystals and then what kind of products we can make using those nanocrystals. We're really here to help facilitate the U.S. industry, both the world industry, to better utilize and more efficiently utilize uh, wood and fiber-based materials in their products, paper products and also other products such as wood composites and other things that can be used. We're a pilot plant facility for producing cellulosic nanomaterials at the Forest Products Laboratory. Fundamentally what we have here is the ability to turn wood all the way from a log to a sheet of paper. We also have recycling equipment so we can take in paper that's been used already and basically recycle it and reutilize 
create pulp that be used again out in the industry. Uh, both of these materials essentially start out with uh, bleach pulp as their, as their starting material, and we're making two different products. One is cellulose nanocrystals, and what this is is it's bit, essentially short, small, rigid rods that are colloidal in water. The other material we're making are cellulose nanofibrils. We're using a chemical called Tempo to oxidize them. And essentially, these are also about five nanometers in diameter, but they're very, very long fibers. And what we're doing is, the purpose of this pilot plant is really to produce these materials for other researchers around the United States and around the world to use as an R&D material. And people are putting it into other products. They're using it as to, uh, for surface coatings, they're putting it into paints and epoxy coatings. Uh, they're also looking at putting it into uh, other polymers that can be used as composites, whether it's tiny pieces of plastic like in a phone or it's very large things like car panels. The other thing that people are putting them into are cement so that they essentially strengthen concrete. So I said that our purpose here is really to provide these materials from the forest and from wood and pulp uh, and make them into these nanomaterials that people can then use for uh, R&D for producing other products that are stronger, lighter, cheaper, more recyclable. Composites is the materials that we take a little bit of materials in the binding them together into the big pieces. The mission of our units is to look at the raw materials. Each composite has a unique performance. In the wood-based composite materials, we are basically including the wood element. And also, we need something to bind them together. We need a resin. We glue them back together. So that's what the composites. This is a wet forming process. The water is mainly using the carrying to make the fiber as uniform as possible, interact together. They rely on the hydrogen bond to make the panel. So that's what we call the wet process. The panel is 100% wood fiber. Or you can use it in the recycled fibers, you can use it in some other materials. 100% green products, pretty strong, very nice materials. Using similar technology, we can develop even advanced composite materials. Well, this is the one is using the lightweight sandwich structures to make very, very strong, high performance, um, scratch resistance panels. This one can sustain and uh, uh, the weight of the 50 small cars are standing on the top. With it. You cannot break it. So the very strong materials you can see, but people can sit and standing on top. This is used for the air transportation pallet, not with a truck. If you know the wood products, there are a variety of composites available. Most things dominating in the United States is uh, the structure composite. And there are some other materials which you're using for the interior decorations, uh, furniture, all kinds of applications. We have the largest number of specimens and the broadest array of species in the world. We also have the highest proportion for a large wood collection of these botanically verified specimens. My name's Alex Wiedenhoft. I'm a research botanist and team leader here in the Center for Wood Anatomy Research at the Forest Products Laboratory. And this is the single best place in the world to work to do what I do for a living. Wood is valued for a variety of different properties. It can be valued for its low density, for, with a good example being balsa wood, which we use for small carvings and model airplanes and things that need to be light and soft. It can be valued for its high density and, and extreme mechanical strength. Other woods are valued for their scent. There's a wood from Asia, Cinnamomum camphora. When you think of the smell 
of a camphor spray, a rub or spray that you'll use when you have a cold. Originally, that was extracted from the leaves and bark and wood of the camphor tree. It's got a sour, a sour odor that actually helps in the identification. The Center for Wood Anatomy Research was one of the first research groups at the Forest Products Laboratory. And so when the lab opened its doors in 1910, there was a wood anatomy group here, and the wood collection began growing at that time. The most difficult part of the job working here with the world's largest research wood collection is maintaining a balance between the fundamental scientific needs and the requirements taking care of and curating a collection like this. And then our role as researchers, trying to solve real world problems having to do with wood and wood utilization that help everyday people. And the balance between the basic botanical science and the applied science and the relevant science is something that we're always working with. And it's perhaps the hardest part of the job, but it's also probably the most satisfying part. There are very few places where you can come and find all the material on wood in one location. This institution covers both pulp and paper and solid wood products. Most other countries divide those up into different research institutions and both are covered by this library. The library has lots of older things going back all the way to 1910. We were the only library that actually had those original Forest Service maps with where the different species of trees were growing. We have had those scanned, they're now online, so that you can see where those tree species have moved over time. Wood means a lot to American culture. It's ju just so part of the function of, of everyday life. When you look into all the different products that we use and all the different things we take for granted in the United States, wood is really behind a lot of them or at the foundation of, of many of them. The wood product is efficient and uh, also reliable materials. We're producing cellulosic nanomaterials from the forest and from wood and people can then use these nanomaterials for producing other stronger, lighter, more recyclable products. What we're trying to do is marry the best modern science uh, in order to evaluate wood on a level that hasn't previously been done. I'd like to close out by just telling you that a lot of the work we do really builds on the culture of use of wood and wood in the United States and around the country and around the world. A lot of the work we do goes into helping us manage our natural resources more effectively and to use wood in its most appropriate, highest value. So we're very important and we feel we're very important to the wise use of wood and to building the wood culture. <laughs>